All right, so in this video tutorial, we will be looking at question four from homework five. So this is a really good question, uh, super easy, just like the previous three questions. And in this question, we have to take a look at Jocelyn's annual snack purchases and calculate her elasticity of demand for chips and then the cross price elasticity for salsa, pretzels, and sodas. So, um, basically, uh, what you have to do for part A is, it doesn't say it explicitly. However, when we talk about the cross price elasticity, this price is changing, this price is for the price of chips. So, we are going to use that price information, that's the only price information given, so as price of chips increases, we're going to calculate the price elastic, uh, cross price elasticity between chips increasing, the price of chips increasing, and then how much salsa she buys, how much pretzel she buys, and how much soda she buys. And that's what this cross price elasticity means. And then we have to use that data that we calculated in part A to determine whether or not the goods uh, of salsa, pretzels, and soda are complements, substitutes, or unrelated goods. So let's get started. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my data into Microsoft Excel. Alright, so that is copied in there. I'm going to make my columns a little bit bigger and then I'm going to shrink them again personal preference. And then one thing I want to do is insert uh, a column in front of my table. And uh, the reason I want to do this is because I want to put some labels over here. So let's, let's do this for part A. Calculate the elasticities. So in order to calculate the elasticities, we need to find the percent changes. Um, so let's take a look at the formula real quick. So this should be, here we go, cross price elasticity. So this is the formula for cross price elasticity. The percent change in quantity demanded of good A divided by the percent change in quantity demanded of good, excuse me, the percent change in price of good B. So we have a formula. So we have to calculate the percentages right there. So let's go ahead and do that first. So I'm going to type in percent change, percent change. And then this is just going to be equal to uh, Q2 minus uh, row 2 minus row 1 divided by the average of row 2 and row 1. Okay, looks good, no errors. All right, so. We have to go ahead and change this to percentage format, like that. And then we have to drag this all the way across. And it looks like looks like it, it worked pretty well. Next thing we have to do is we have to calculate our elasticity. So elasticity So for part A, the elasticity of demand for chips is going to be chips and then the price of chips. For part B on part A, it's going to be containers of salsa and price of chips. For part C, it's going to be bags of pretzels, price of chips. And then for part D, it's going to be cans of soda, price of chips. So really, it doesn't matter which one of these is, our denominator is always going to be price of chips. So, I'm going to use that information to divide this numerator, take my numerator percentage, divide by the denominator percentage, and then I'm going to change that denominator from a relative cell reference to an absolute cell reference. So basically that means that as I drag this formula all the way across, let me change the format to number real quick, as I drag this formula all the way across, the numerator is going to change. It's going to change based on this uh, 
uh, cell up here, but the denominator is always going to be price. So if I click into this formula, I see that those dollar signs made this percent change always reference this cell here, whereas as I drag the formula across, my numerator changed along with the formula, along with the cell that uh, the formula is in. Excellent. So now we have our elasticities. So I'm going to put in um, type of elasticity. So this is going to be um, our demand elasticity. And then this is going to be cross price. So all of these are going to be cross price elasticities, which makes sense. Um, because we're comparing the quantity of one good with the price of another good. Next, I need to uh, identify for the cross price elasticities, or excuse me, for the, well, we'll do for both. For the cross price elasticities, I need to determine whether it's substitute, complement, or unrelated. And then for the demand elasticity, I need to determine whether it's elastic or inelastic or human elastic. So, I know that, and actually I'm going to move this cell up. So I'm going to move my type row above, and then I'm going to uh, make it go to the left there, or to the right. I'm going to move the alignment there. So now, I'm going to, on the row below my table, I'm going to type in my formula. And this is going to be the same formula we used before. If the absolute value, we're calculating demand elasticity of this cell is greater than 1, then I'm going to return elastic. Otherwise, I'm going to do another test to see if the absolute value of this cell is less than 1, and this should be greater, not less than 1, and then this should be less than 1 over here, I'm going to return inelastic, otherwise I'm going to return unit elastic. All right. So I have that there. Now I want to do this something similar for this. So for cross price elasticity, uh, there's a table in here, but basically if the price of one good goes up and the elasticity is negative, so if the elasticity is less than zero, the actual elasticity, not the absolute value, then it's going to be a complementary good because what we're saying is quantity decreases as price uh, increases. If it is greater than zero, so if the regular elasticity, not the absolute value, is greater than zero, then it's going to be um, a substitute because as the price of our chips goes up, we consume more pretzels, so we substitute away from chips to pretzels. So if you go down, um, da -da 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 -da, this, uh, this bottom paragraph right here under cross price elasticity of demand explains all about that. So let's go ahead and make our formula. So I'm going to do an if function again, and I'm going to check to see if the elasticity is less than zero, then it's going to be a uh, substitute or excuse me, complement. I'll just say complement. If it's not less than zero, then I need to do another test to see if it's greater than zero, and then assign it a substitute. Otherwise, if it's neither a complement nor a substitute, I know it's unrelated. All right, and I'm going to drag that all the way across. And now, my Excel formula 
automatically calculated the elasticity's results, the interpretations accordingly. So interpretation. All right. So let's go ahead and rename this sheet to question four. We'll save our sheet and verify that we answered all questions. So question four, we answered part A, calculate the elasticities. Part B, we successfully identified, uh, interpreted those numbers that we calculated in part A. So we did our, our question here. Great job, super easy. And using the table of data, we were able to identify what a complement was, what a substitute was. So good job.